Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome to New Life Fellowship, Victoria, Pentecostal Church. I'd like to welcome you all in the name of Jesus and thank you very much for tuning in today. If you have any contacts in London or the surrounding towns, please inbox us and contact us and we are more than happy to invite them to church. Today is the day of salvation and today is the day that you can help somebody come to the Lord. Just give us their uh, detail or Facebook and we will send them an invitation to the church. Thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, in the book of Matthew. If we can turn to Matthew chapter 6, 24. That's Matthew chapter 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. And it reads here. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, which is mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. It is not the life more than meat, and the body more than remnant. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into the barge, yet your heavenly Father feeds them, as you not much better than they are. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your statue? And why take you thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We're going to pray right now. If you'd like to please bow your head as we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now by the power of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost that you would open up our understanding and give us revelation to what these words mean. I pray that we will not be a hearer of the Word only, but a doer. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody that hears this message, you will bless them, Lord God, and encourage them and strengthen them through your Word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray in Jesus' name. I want to bring to you this teaching today called God Knows Your Needs. God knows exactly where you are. Do you know I have met pastors in certain countries who will not have a Bible study because they don't have any money to get a drink or a snack. But anyway, the Bible says that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Many times we worry about our needs and the needs of our family members etc but Jesus gives us a uh, uh, he gives us this promise in the Bible and in the scriptures which says that we need to trust in him trust him with our life trust him with what we eat trust him with our drink trust him with our health trust him with our body trust him with our clothing God will provide all your needs fear is the biggest bondage of all. I believe the Bible says, the Lord said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind and love. Now, so many people are afraid. They're afraid to witness about Jesus because they may lose their job. They're afraid to witness about Jesus in the college or university because some people will laugh at them. They are living in the bondage of fear. Now, I'm not saying you go and stand in the middle of the cafeteria in your school and start shouting, repent. But what I will say is this, that God wants to use you. And if you will pray and say, God, use me in school, he will. Now, in this passage, we see the word mamma. And mamma means worldly riches. It means wealth and money. It means 
prestige. It means money has become your God. It has become an influence, an evil influence. One of the funny things on Facebook is you start talking to some people on Facebook and pastors and ministers and saints. And so many, the first thing they say, oh, I've got no telephone. Oh, I've got no money. Oh, I need some money. And they start begging money. And you just said hello to them. You've just said hello to them online. And the first thing that they do is ask for money. Now, the Bible says we are the head, not the tail. And I really believe if you are faithful in your offering and faithful to God with your money, you don't need to go online and start begging people to give you money. God will provide for you. Now, if we turn to the first book of Timothy, first book of Timothy, chapter 6, that's first Timothy, chapter 6 six okay and we need to go to verse number 11 verse number 11 so that's first timothy 6 11 it says here for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith which is the gospel the church the message and pierced themselves through with many sorrows but thou O man of God flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience and meekness now it's funny that this scripture is written to the uh, uh, Timothy which is in the church this scripture is not for unbelievers God is saying that some people they come in the church but they love money so much they won't go to church. They will miss prayer meetings. And it says the love of money is the root of evil. Not having money, but loving money more than you love God. Which while some coveted after. In other words, saints, all they want is money to the point where they will not go to church, not pray, not read their Bible. And it says they have erred from the faith. In other words, they have left the church, left the faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Why? Because if you're in love with money, more than you're in love with God you're going to have a trouble you're going to have a big big trouble now it says in this scripture it says godliness contentment food remnant uh, uh, these things which uh, people sometimes are in such uh, wanting all the time running after all the time they're not running after God they're running after all of these things the rich fall into temptations they are foolish they become hurtful they're full of lusts and all they want is money 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 that's all they ever want and you can see them all over the internet you can see people in the church you say to them why are you not coming to the church oh because my employer won't let me oh because I'm working Sundays oh because I can't get the time off because of my work in other words your work is more important than your relationship with God you need to know that truth you cannot buy yourself in heaven you cannot buy yourself in heaven don't sit there and think to yourself after the end of your life that God will be happy if you've worked yourself to death and done nothing for his kingdom you ain't gonna buy yourself into heaven I will tell you that you ain't now we need to have righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. If you build on these things, uh, it's amazing what can happen. Now, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let us go to verse number 17. We're in 1 Timothy 6. Let's go to 17 and 19 in the same. It says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who give us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Now, here we can really see that it's not wrong to be rich, but if your money is taking you away from God, then you're going to have a trouble. If your money if is becoming like you won't share it, you don't pay your tithes, you're not involved in missions, you're not involved in feeding the homeless, you're not involved. Do you know that in Sodom and Gomorrah, a lot of people believe that in Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed them because they were gay or homosexual. Actually, that's not true. 
that was part of their sin but one of their main sin was that they were full of bread and they were full of pride which means they had loads of money they were overfed and they were arrogant and that's why they ended up committing these sexual sins and so we can be like that sometimes we can get all the money and then we're not in the church anymore we leave the church we're more interested in building our financial kingdom than building God's kingdom but it Jesus speaks very clearly in the Bible. He says, if you go to Matthew chapter 7, Matthew, that's the book of Matthew. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to go to verse number 7 and read from 7 to number 12. So that's Matthew 7, 7. It says here, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh, receive. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. But you know what people do? They use this scripture to ask people for money. And they say, well, the Bible said, ask, and you shall receive. But Jesus is speaking in red letter here. He's saying, ask Jesus ask and you shall receive so if you need something ask jesus and then jesus will bless you through somebody else you don't need to go with a begging bowl always begging verse 9 says or oh, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will be given a stone do you see so if you ask your dad some bread he's not going to give you a stone or if he asks a fish will he give him a serpent if you then be an evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good gifts unto you therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you do you even so to them for this is the law do you see god is speaking here that we need to ask god if we're poor we need to ask god help me but at the same time we need to ask god teach me to be content don't let me become greedy don't let me depend on my money don't let me depend on my employer don't let me depend on the dollar don't let me depend on the pound don't let me depend on the peso or the yen or, or the raya don't let me i need to depend on the name of jesus christ of nazareth the bible said first seek the kingdom of god and all his righteousness ask seek knock god wants us to knock he wants to bless us but he wants you to ask god so if you've got a church event coming up and you've got something like that you don't need to go begging to everybody you need just to pray and fast and say lord can you provide through people instead of getting on the internet and when a pastor starts talking to you the first thing you say my phone is broken this is broken this is broken i need money if you ask the lord he will provide you because it's terrible when someone starts talking to you and the first thing they hear from you is you begging begging for money some of us will support our families and some of us will worry all the time we worry and we burden ourselves with so many troubles we need to give those worries and we need to give those burdens into the hand of jesus do you not believe that jesus knows what we need of course he knows what we need he knows what we need and he knows when we need it and that's why we need to rely on him to have a content spirit is so precious in the eyes of the lord and this is why some people they want to go abroad they keep going i want to go abroad i want to go abroad and when they go abroad they go to these rich countries and they don't serve the lord anymore but when they were poor they were serving the lord they were in the prayer meetings they're in the bible meetings they had time for god and suddenly when they're abroad and they got all the money they have no time for god so did going abroad help you to be closer to god no it actually took you away from God. It's better that some people quit their job and go back home to their home country and serve the Lord again. Because to be honest with you, more people will probably go to hell because they're in love with money than they will anything else. Because Satan knows it. He used it on Jesus. He said, if you will worship me, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall you worship. 
In other words, Satan was offering Jesus the world, the kingdoms of this world and all the things in it. And that's what he does to some of us. We're hot in the church and then we get a job abroad and we go and make big money and we become dead. We are a dead Christian. We cannot talk about Jesus. We don't give out tracts. We don't go to prayer meeting. We don't go to Bible study. We just do nothing. We are in love with the world. Remember, you cannot have two masters. You can only have one master. Either you're going to have Jesus as your master or you're going to have this world as your master. But you cannot have two there's some people that are just so crazy and so foolish over money they don't care they will throw away their dignity just so they can try to get some money you know in the book of ecclesiastes in ecclesiastes which is in the old testament that's the book of ecclesiastes ecclesiastes which is in the old testament it is after proverbs chapter 5 we're going to go to chapter 5, verse number 10. Verse number 10, Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 10. And the scripture says here, He that loveth silver, but in the modern context, He that's in love with money shall not be satisfied with money, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is vanity. Do you see? We get one pair of shoes, then we get two, then six, then ten. We get one jacket, then five, then ten, then fifteen. We get one car, then two, then four, then six cars. And when we come to the church, we cannot be satisfied with just one God we cannot be satisfied with his Holy Ghost or his presence why because we are not satisfied with this world we are not content with what God has given us so we want more and more and more and more and we end up making ourselves look stupid because we cannot enjoy the presence of God because the presence of God is not enough it is not enough I'll tell you now, cast away some of these burdensome belongings and get yourself back with God. Get yourself on fire with God. Ask God, help me, Lord, to be content with all the things you have given me. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. He didn't say, I am the bank account, the credit card, and the six houses. And I'm not saying it's wrong to be wealthy. I'm not saying, please do not misunderstand me. It is not wrong to be rich. It is not wrong to do well. And it's not wrong to have good jobs but if your job takes over your relationship with God it becomes wrong you have made your choice you have chosen mammon you have chosen mammon and usually people who are in love with money cannot show compassion to the poor don't show compassion to the homeless instead they make up these excuses they deserve it they deserve it when they're sitting in nice big houses with loads of food let me ask you is jesus feel comfortable in some of your homes would he would he feel comfortable in some of your homes? Let's turn to the book of uh, 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 Psalms. Sorry, book of Psalms, which is just uh, before Proverbs. And let's go to the book of Psalms 49. Psalms 49, which is in the Old Testament. The book of Psalms, uh, chapter 49. And we're going to go to verse number 6. Verse number 6. And it says here, They that trust in their wealth... And boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can be any means redeemed his brother. Nor give to God a ransom. For the redemption of their soul is precious. And it ceaseth forever. In other words what God is saying there. All of your money. And some of us we love to boast our money. We get the biggest car. We drip ourselves with jewelry. And then when somebody says you know it's not good to have jewelry. We become defensive and say. Oh well God knows. God, Listen you're boasting your wealth. You're boasting your money. You are boasting. And they that trust in their wealth. And boast in it in themselves in a multitude and none of them can any mean redeem your brother in other words you ain't going to win people to the lord if you're boasting of your riches you ain't going to be able to bring anyone to god if you're t uh, uh, showing off all of what god has given you and don't sit there and think for one moment well god is blessing me so i'm right with god sometimes god allows us to have wealth to see what we will do with it and if we waste it then you are the one who will have to give an account. You are the one who will have to give an account. So all I say today, in the name of Jesus, be wise, be content, allow God to use you. If you're wealthy, 
Bless people with your money. Don't give it all away. But that's where you pray for wisdom and wiseness. Ask God to lead you. Ask God to teach you contentment. If you're overworking, you've got three or four jobs, get rid of a job. Get rid of one so you can go to the prayer meeting. Get rid of it and give it to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't need all this anymore, but I do need you. Lord, I don't want everything, but I do want you. Lord, I don't want to be everywhere in these parties, but I want to be with you. Seek ye the kingdom of God first. Seek the presence of God in your life. Pro go to prayer meetings. Do Bible studies. Go to church with a hunger. Be hungry for God and not for the things of this world. Because I'm very t t sad to tell you all, this world is going to go the same way as the Titanic. And there is nothing that can stop it. God bless you, and God bless the United Kingdom. Please leave your comments. Please, please, please subscribe to this channel, and please post it to as many people as you can. We're so thankful. We're located in London, Victoria, around the corner from Buckingham Palace. Come and visit us and fellowship with us anytime. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, and goodbye.